Hello, friends. We're so glad you've joined us for this edition of Lift Him Up. We have a solemn and serious subject to consider today. We're looking at the Bible subject of the mark of the beast. You're going to need to turn in your Bible to the New Testament book of Revelation. And James, here we're considering the issue of worship in the context of the seal of God and the mark of the beast. We have already in our previous study we have considered the seal of God in great detail and learned exactly what the seal of God is. We've identified the seal of God as the earnest, the promise, the assurance of the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ, the restful dependence of faith in Christ, which is symbolized, which is embodied in the Sabbath commandment. And we saw very clearly that the call to worship God according to his commandments in the uh, three angels' messages, brings us right into the heart of God's law Absolutely. to the keeping of the Sabbath. So we find that the central issue in Revelation 13 and 14 is worship. Mm -hmm. The word worship is used no less than seven times. In Revelation chapter 13, as we seek to identify the mark of the beast, we're going to find three principles revealed here. The mm -hmm. first one in verse 15 and in other verses is worship. Are we going to worship God or are we going to worship the beast? The second one is receiving the mark of the beast, verse 16 of Revelation 13, in the forehand or in the hand. We need to understand why it is that we can only receive the seal of God in the forehead, but we can receive the mark of the beast in the forehead or in the hand. What does that mean? And the third one is found in verse 18. This is a, a clue, this is a hint to understand this whole issue. It says here, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score and six. Six, six, six. What does six, six, six mean, Ty? Many people think that the mark of the beast is the number six, six, six. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of confusion concerning this. What is six, six, six all about? Obviously, it takes wisdom to understand it. There is a popular opinion, of course, that it's going to be some kind of a literal mark, like a tattoo or the barcode on food products or something like that or even a microchip placed right under the flesh with the number, the literal number 666. But it's interesting to note that the literal Greek here is better translated in the New International Version of the Bible and other versions wherein it says, for it is man's number, his number is 666. So 666 is man's number. It's the number of man. This is clear in the Bible. Numbers have symbolic meaning. Man was created back in Genesis on the sixth day. The sixth day as the creation of man became the number by which man is symbolized in Scripture. The seventh day, God ended His work and He rested. So the seventh day Sabbath and the number seven as a symbol of completeness became a representation of God. It is God's number. God's number is seven. Man's number is six. So here we have six representing the number of man. We have a triple six. Could that be a warning against receiving the worship of man as it's posed here in Revelation 13? receiving the doctrine or the teaching of man as opposed to the teaching of the gospel or the truth of God and receiving the authority of man. In other words, allowing ourselves to, to receive the authority of not being able to buy or sell under the pressure of that economic pressure of the authority of man mm -hmm. as opposed to the authority of God. It's very clear, James, that this is indeed the issue. In the book of Revelation, we have two opposing forces. We have the commandments of God and the commandments of man, the worship of God, the worship of man, a human institution and system. Clearly, the teachings of God and the teachings of man. Paul gives us insight into this as well. There's a parallel passage in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that is very insightful here. Paul deals with the same exact power that John in Revelation deals with. In Revelation, Paul or John calls it the beast power, referring to the papacy. Here, the Apostle Paul identifies this power as the man of sin and the mystery of iniquity. Verses 3 and 4 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 reads as follows, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, that is the coming of the Lord, shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, so that 
or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Here's the same power brought to view, dear friends. Here we have a power that falls away. In order to fall away, you have to first be connected, which brings us back to a previous point that we've made in studies that we've had, and that is that the power we're dealing with in Revelation is not an overtly evil power that professes no Christianity, but it is a false system that professes Christianity and seeks to deceive people. In order to fall away, or as the Greek reads here, go into apostasy, you have to first be connected. And so we have an apostasy taking place here. And the apostasy revolves around sin and iniquity. Sin, James, is a key point here in this scripture because sin is the transgression of God's law, which brings us back to Revelation again where this power opposes the law of God and those who keep the commandments of God. And in verse 4, he exalts himself above God to receive worship that is due only to God. Absolutely. In fact, Ty, Paul talks about this same happening, the same apostasy in Acts chapter 20. In Acts chapter 20, in mm -hmm. verse 29, he says, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Verse 30, Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. So here Paul is speaking about the same truths that he revealed in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. He's talking about men arising among the Christian church, inside the Christian church, to draw men after themselves. Mm -hmm. And this is what we see taking place in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. In fact, it's interesting, Ty, Paul talks about this happening just after his departure in the early history of the Christian church, which we can see now applies to the apostasy and the rise of the medieval church. And then he goes on to say in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that this wicked that is revealed, the Lord will consume, verse 8, with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. So here we have a clear revelation mm -hmm. of the Antichrist, of the man of sin, the man who opposes God's law, as you said, sin being the transgression of God's law, 1 John 3, 4. Rising up shortly after Paul left from this earth and continuing to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And it's important, Ty, I think, for our viewers to understand that Paul not only warns of the rise of this power, but tells us in verses 10, 11, and 12 how it is that we can be safeguarded from being deceived by this power. Mm -hmm. He tells us who are going to be deceived. Verse 10, he says that people will perish because they receive not the love of the truth. Verse 11, mm -hmm. God will send them strong delusion because they would believe a lie. And verse 12, they will not believe they'll be damned because they had pleasure in unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. So it's very clear here that we have a system that exalts itself above God. We're not dealing here, James, with people. We're dealing here with a system, not individuals, but a system. It's a false system that is deceiving people in the world. And this system exalts itself, exalts man above God, and receives the worship that is due only to God. And right in the heart of this worship <clears throat> issue is the law of God versus iniquity or lawlessness or sin, which is transgression of the law of God. Now we need to remember, Ty, that Jesus Christ is the inspirer of the book of Revelation. It's mm -hmm. the revelation of Jesus that God gave to him and that he gave to John through the angels.